got new graduates, got to have new altitude. Got to have new altitude. Got to have new altitude. Got, we got to adjust our altitude. Now, read this with me, please. Gratitude is the attitude that sets the altitude for living. What's, what's, what's the altitude? It's simply how high you're going to go. Every, every child in the school system has the ability to soar. The question is, do they have folk around them that are trying to help them soar or trying to put them down? Every believer has the right to soar, but now have we adjusted our attitude to have gratitude to say I'm going as high as God has me to go? So my attitude, please read this one, my attitude will determine what? My altitude. If I don't think I can fly, I'm not going to fly. If I, if I, the, the story about the eagle that was up there and everything, and he was down here with the chickens, and it didn't look like a chicken, they said, kept hanging with the chickens. We got some Christian eagles that are hanging around with some chickens. We just tap it and scratch it. And how are we going to do? Instead of flying, I just want to fly. At some point in life, I got to recognize that we are made to soar, to made to go higher, made to do better, made to have victory, made to have victory, made to have overflow, made to have prosperity. I can I have chickens or Lord? At some point, my attitude is going to turn my altitude here. So, 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 so this, so, uh, and I love Zig Zig. Before he went to be with the Lord, I love this quote here. Please read this. Your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. What's going to determine how high you go is who you think you are in God. And how high you know God wants you to go. It's not, what's aptitude? Your ability. You're not being blessed because you're ability. You're not being honored because you're ability. You're being blessed because 2 Corinthians 8, 12 says there must first be a willing mind. you got a willing mind to press your way out here in the, in the cold. Praising God, we got some heat up in the house. Glory to God. At some point, you press your way out so your attitude is going to determine how high you go. It is not your ability. It's not your capability. It's not what you know. At some point, it said, it's not what, what I can do. It's what Jesus has already done. That it turns out I know. Can somebody give God a hand of praise for us today? Let me give you a C and an I real quick, and I want to go back and, and, and end with this other part. So the C is Christ reconciled us to God. I'll bring the outline in. The end was new creation, new creature, new creation, new creature altogether. Christ reconciled us to God and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Glory to God. Christ, by his blood, his death and resurrection reconciled us to God. He's the one that reconciled us to God. And not only did he reconcile us, every believer has the ministry of reconciliation. You may not ever be in a poor pit preacher, but at some point every believer is called to the ministry of reconciliation. That where there is disharmony, God sends us there to make sure there's harmony. Where there is discord, God sends us there to make sure it has peace. That God is called, and the ultimate reconciliation is to reconcile folk who are not saved to the Lord. Yeah. So that this is what happened. Just because you've been believing in God for, for, for months and days and years, and folk haven't gotten saved, you have planted some seeds in their lives. And so the word says, I planted Apollo's water, God gave the increase. Maybe your role was to plant the seed. Some ask him water it, but God's going to always get the increase. I don't care who you're praying for to get saved. You keep on planting seeds. 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 Seed. And after a while, somebody's going to come back and water So God promised, I will give the increase. So Christ reconciled us to God. Gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So reconciliation means restoration of favor. I just got to show you about this right here. So here's what happened. About, what, about this whole reconciliation piece. Look at the one that says fall of man. The S means self. The cross is Christ. So before we got saved, we were on the throne of our lives. And he was way out there somewhere. When we got saved, he now took over the lordship of our lives. And we were on the side. But believers get it twisted. Because sometimes we act like we're the one on the throne. And, you can, and there's only room for one. Right. I don't know if you've been in a two-seater before. You can get it. And as much as I love that, if I had a two-seater, I can't get all y'all over there. Because there's only room for one. There's, the only one. there's only room for one on this seat. And before we got saved, we were on that seat of the throne of our lives. And Christ was out there somewhere in that thought. When he became, that's how we got saved. 
I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's now Lord of my life. He's now on the throne of my life. He's now in the control. Of, at that point, he's the one that's first. And now will takes a back seat. And believers keep going back and forth. And even though they've been reconciled, we keep putting ourselves on the throne. We keep putting ourselves up there. At some point, when we kept, uh, always keep him on the throne, at that point, we'll see manifestation every time. We talk about reconciliation. But here's what I want to go back to. Uh, here's your eye right here. The I love this part here, and then we'll do this, and I'll give you one other point we've done. The I engrafted into Christ. Engrafted into Christ. Engrafted into Christ. Engrafted simply means established. Engrafted into Christ. From verse 17 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Amplified Classic. Engrafted into Christ. Now this is what I love. This is, this is such a beautiful image right here. So imagine, here's what engrafted means. There was a plant already established. Something from the outside came in and tried to get attached to it. And, it, 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 and then when it finally allowed the nutrients from this plant to now start flowing to this branch, that's called being engrafted. And, if, and, and engrafted in the scientific world in particular, that the point of where it's engrafted is stronger than any other point that was already there. So here's what happened. So here was Christ. We were out here somewhere as Gentiles. We got engrafted. Now we are established in him. And so now we are in him stronger and more important and more powerful than the ones that were already there as well. We are now being engrafted in the Lord. So now I have a new hope. And now I have a new attitude. And now I have new thoughts. And now I have new behavior. And now I have that point, new, new, new attitude and thoughts and also habits because I've been engrafted to Christ. So here's the point I want to go with as we get ready to finish up here. So believers, read this with me, please. Believers can what? Choose to put on the new man and put off the old man since we are a new creation. One more time, read this again. Believers can choose to put on the new man and put off the old man since we are a new creation. One more time. Believers can choose to put on the new man and put off the old man since we are a new creation. We are the only ones that have this authority here. We put this on. We put this on. We are the ones that put this on. So life is nothing but a series of choices. That's, that's what one was about. This is what we are. Making a decision. Am I going to go back in here? Am I going to put on the new man? Put on the old man. Now here's the point. The old man is always there. Be clear. Even though we walk in the new man right now in service, the old man is soon as soon, soon, soon touch your own. Old man ready to pop back up. And right now, so it's popped up right now. Wait a minute, this morning he texted, I'll meet you at 1130. His name is the preacher. So now he was going to say, this is a third. So bad choices. And this is a three people in the text already. So bad choices. So I got to make a choice to put on the new man. Got to make a choice to put off the old man. You don't have to cuss somebody out because they cussed you. You don't have to fight back in them because they, there's nothing worse than letting somebody fight by themselves. They're coming there. I have to get in all this. Praise God. See, that's the problem now. Most of them are like, I know you're coming like that. So now you got to make a choice. Put on the old man. Our choice? God's choice. Please read this with me. We talked about this last week. You are free to make your choices, but you are not free to choose the consequences. You, 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 you're free to make any choice you want. Some folks made a choice to be here today, praise God. Some folks made a choice not to be here. Some folks trying to watch Periscope. I'm about to shut down Periscope. That year, some of made a choice. Had 15 folks watch Periscope. That's a place that put me a choice. Periscope cannot, what do you say? What was that little thing? It, 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 it is not, it, say it. It's not, it's something. Come on now. Come on. Don't let me hang now. Okay. Come on. Okay. It, that, that girl, you got to say it. At okay. this point, this point that Periscope is a supplement. Like if I miss something, like for example, y'all come out late and Sister Cindy got to give and take, and hey, y'all bring up her notes. You can please get here on time. She, and I just love, she's in the back. She's just so wonderful. She's hugging everybody. And when she sees her little head around, you can see her back going, I can't believe these folks got to leave. So, just, so, so, so just get here on time. So praise God. But she, and, and you would never know. She just still hugs you and everything. And, then, and, and you can see her in the background. I wish she could go back. So that is so, so it's, it's a supplement. But it's not, about not a substitute. See, there, 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 there's no way that whatever happens when we are together can be, be, be recreated online. That's right. There's no way. You can't see folk online. You can't hug folk online. You, you, you can't experience it. It's a nice supplement, 
but it cannot be a substitute for what God has done as well. Please read this again. You are free to make your choices, but you are, are not free to choose the consequences. So this is what I want to go back and finish this up right with this part as well. So the idea I want to talk about as we get ready to finish up. So how do we go back in and put on this old nature and go back and put on this new man? How do we put out the old nature and put on this new man as well? So, here, so here's the point. Sometimes I think Christians try to get so spiritually deep that we miss analogies that are right before us. When Jesus was teaching, he knew it was an agrarian culture. They, they, they were farmers. So what did he use? He used examples for farming so people could understand. Plant a seed, get a harvest. Oh, I got that. Plant a seed, plant it on stony ground, not a harvest. On, on rocky ground, not a harvest. Shallow ground, but you, on good ground, harvest. So, let me, what's the, so we get ready to leave here. What's the best analogy we have here to look at how we're able to put off the old man and put on the new man? Anybody in having the clothes don't fit us anymore? Anybody have some clothes on fit? Yeah, yes. I'll be putting that guy out there. No, I am not seen the same since I was 2016. No, no, no. So here's the point. So how do we put off and deal with clothes that no longer fit us? Well, <laughs> this point. Now, now you know, all of us in here have had at some point worn some clothes that were too small. Trying to talk about it's fashion. No, I'm not fashion looking like you right now. No, I'm not fashion. So, so the idea. Now, so, so, so here's a husband. And, and husband, y'all know we can't get caught in the trap. So at this point, so you can release, she came out of the dressing room. How'd I look? So here's the system that say, offhand, I see your pantyhose are a little too tight. He knew not to go down the road to say, girl, you can't get up in that dress. He knew not to say that. So now, now and before we, now, now here's the next one here. If it's, if it's, if it's too small, I'll get rid of it. Said no woman ever. So the idea was, so the story is saying this. The point here is, so, so, so what are we doing with the clothes that are no longer fit? Now, 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 let's be clear. Before we get on women, now you know every man had his. No, this is the reason right here. Reason. Just because it zips doesn't mean it fits. Glory to God. You know it's something. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it may have zipped up now. Man. It, it, you know. Amen. No, no, no. Yeah. Bust that zip here. So just because it zips doesn't mean it fits. Now, so now, 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 I've been on the women before, but now, now here is an experience that every man I know of that Uncle Ronnie has had right here. Well, we go up here, and you got some pants that you, I mean, some pants you know you like. You're, you are, so, so at some point, these pants have to go. Now, what do you do at this point? Here's another thing. A traditional mom buy stuff too big. Girl, you gonna go into it? Now you know, homeboy now we made this game 20 years. So the idea was, look, look, look a little bit right here, look like I said. So the idea was, so we all have had clothes in the natural that didn't fit. So what do we do with them? If they don't fit, first of all, sometimes people retain them. Folk got, people got clothes in the closet now that were tight 20 pounds ago. <laughs> and wondering, and in our mind, I'm gonna get in that again. Can't even get it beyond the thigh, but it's still in our closet. Retain. Keep it like we're gonna see that size again. That's one thing you can do with clothes. Secondly, readjust it. Then go ahead and put the hem out, the waist out, can readjust it so you can send it away. You know, it, they were just, or you can, now here, or here's the thing we do, what we should be doing, like we do with the, the our old thoughts and old habits and, all, and, and also old behavior. Remove them. We accept the fact that it's unlikely we're going to ever be that size again. You know, I, I, I don't, we, we had, I, I didn't realize the rules when we got married that every year there was spring cleaning. <laughs> and I noticed that the basket that was going out of the house had my stuff, little Bernie Lewis, but didn't have my wife's stuff. <laughs> she got a slip with a hole in it, and I got five suits. <laughs> tennis shoes, not tennis shoes, they, they, they had holes in them, they were holding, they won't bother her. <laughs> had to go. Socks I had to eat. 
I know they, I know they have any healing in them, but they still.